about the planning a test. In planning a test, there is an overall test development process. First, what is the test development process? Someone in the class know what is test development process. A test development process encompasses several key phases that ensure the creation of effective and reliable assessment. Okay. So, um, test development process now is to ensure the creation of effective and reliable assessment. So, now let's focus in. Today, we will lecture or explore the planning, the type of test development versus the planning phase. Okay, can you read the planning phase? Planning phase. Where the purpose of the test is identified, learning outcomes to be assessed are clearly specified, and lastly, a table of specifications is prepared to guide the instruction phase. Okay. It says that the test is the purpose of the test is identified, and learning outcomes to be assessed are clearly are clearly specified and table of specification is prepared to guide the item construction phase. So planning phase is the initial planning phase is the initial steps in test development. So this is the steps sa pagama sa test development process. So nine nine three essential components of planning phase. First is the purpose identification. Or katong ihang Diego bitaw ma. Purpose of the test is identified. So purpose of identification it is the, it determines the purpose and use of the test. There are three common common purpose of test. First is the diagnostic test. So <coughs> diagnostic test is a siya sa purpose of Identification because a purpose of the diagnostic test, the purpose is to identify areas where a student may need additional instruction or support. Like a student nga nanginahanglan of additional paog, kanang pasabot bita ni mo, like additional pa ni mo of i-explain niya or support para mag-guidance niya of asusya na pit gusto ay dapat ma-improve. Next is the formative assessment. So formative assessment, the purpose niya is to formative is to guide instruction and identify guide and identify guide and identify areas where students may need additional support or additional support or clarification. Or as students na asas yan na fit, i-clarify na yun as yung part na was yan sa tan. Kung purpose sa formative assessment. So, next is the summative evaluation. Okay, summative evaluation, purpose niya is to assign grades. Assign grades or determine whether students have met have met the requirements for advancement or certification. So, in, define, in the purpose identification, defining the purpose will guide the subsequent steps in steps of the test development process. So, now let's proceed to the second initial components, the learning outcome specification. Okay, in learning outcome specification, it clearly specifies. It says that in the planning is the learning outcomes to be assessed are clearly specified. Okay. Clear specify the learning outcomes that the test aims to assess. And this outcome should align, dapat siya ang magkakonect siya, align closely with the instruction, instructional objectives and provide measurable criteria for evaluating student performance. So, kaya si Chao Chuan para mag-measure niya ang asa dapat, asa dapat ang student na improve or ma, mag-gabit sa learning outcome specification. Next is the table of specification. Okay, table of specific specification. Develop a table specification that outlines the weight, age, and distribution of items across the identified learning outcomes. This table serves as the blueprint. 
ensuring that the test adequately assess each learning outcomes and avoid an emphasis on certain areas. Over emphasis on certain areas. Muna ang table specification, muna siya ang part na makuan mo, ma-identify mo o asa dapat ang asa dapat ang students na improve or kailangan i improve. Okay. Now let's proceed to the subject of the class. Okay. Now let's proceed to item construction phase. One is yah isa sa planning. Isa sa kan sa test development process. Isa sa key phase niya. Item construction phase. Can you read please class? Item construction phase. We are the best at constructing following the appropriate item format for the necessary outcomes of construction. So in that, in item construction phase, it has key points. The item format selection, aligning item with learning outcomes, and providing clear instruction. Now let's focus on item format selection. Item format selection, choose the appropriate item format based on the learning outcomes and the information required Re required to assess students' understanding. Like, Mag-milit ka og asa dapat ang students bitaw na bagay ang imuhang learning objectives. Asa na bagay ang dapat yung ipapamata na. Like for example, ang common format niya is the multiple choice, short essay, short answer, essay, and problem solving question. Now let's focus on aligning items with learning outcomes. So aligning, aligning items with learning outcomes. It construct each item with a clear, clear connection to a specific learning outcomes, and this alignment ensures the test effectively measures the intended knowledge, skills, or abilities. The second of class, the last is to be discussed like. <coughs> Good morning again, everyone. Good morning. So, since the two of you are discussed by my partner, so I will start with the third one, which is the providing clear learning outcomes instruction. So, it is very susceptible that we communicate instruction and expectations to our learners. So, to clarify the instruction to students. So, a biggest or community instruction that we can really do in accurate responses and adversely impact the validity of the test. So, if an um, um, teacher is doing a clarify of the instruction to complete the um, students in our place of assessment. So, in this case, the teacher should uh, um, instruct the learners very clearly and loud. So, since we're done with the planning phase and the item construction phase, let's move on to the review phase. So, please, can you read the uh, review phase? are examined by the teacher or his or her peers prior to administration based on judgment of their alignment, content, and behavior of opponents of the instructional competencies. And after administration, based on analysis of students. So, review phase is typically the first to stage where in the process where the examinations, the assessment, and the um, evaluation takes place. So, in various context, it would be by project um, management, software development, um, academic setting, and quality assurance. So. In the essence, the review phase systematic examination or evaluation step that occurs in at different stages depending on the context. So it will aim of ensuring quality, correctness, and alignment of goals. So what um, purpose of the review phase? So since it is a crucial step in um, enhancing the quality and quality validity of the test, so there is 
procedures of review phase, which is the pre-administration review and the post-administration review. So pre-administration review is um, before administering the test, so the teacher should review the test for the alignment of content and the behavioral components of the instructional competencies. So it, it checks the teacher if you can not be able to adjust me up. This review, this review helps, kanang, helps identify any potential flaws or biases from the items that and allows for kanang, necessary adjustments. So example, the best example for this is that standardized testing. So before the student takes the standardized test, so the school administrators may conduct a pre-administration review. So during this phase, so uh, they, they will ensure that all the testing materials are in order. So it has to like uh, um, testing materials is nabasa pa ng ba kayo and the answer sheets are all correctly labeled. Also, in, in any necessary accommodations for students with specialties, the dapat ma-arrange na siya kung sa sila mag-take sa exams. So this review helps na ka ng, uh, helps to identify and address any potential issues in the testing process. It can um, ensure it's smooth and Fair administration with the actual test day arrives. So number two is the post administration review, which is basically is after the taking the um, assessment now. So teachers should analyze their performance on each item. So this analysis provides valuable insights into the effectiveness and difficulty level at, um, at the items, allowing for further improvements in future assessment. So I think the body checks the teacher if you can also dapat improve ang bata. So, also mo siya nag-isun sa assessment niya yung bata. So, it is an assessment or evaluation that takes place after a particular activity, just like um, test or project. So, na mahuman na. So, it is also involves um, examining the process, the outcomes, and the overall effectiveness in the completed task. So, ano yung ma-determine ito asa ang strength and weaknesses sa isang mga learners. So, the difference between the two is that the pre-administration review is before siya sa kanang assessment ma, it takes siya. While the post-administration review is after na sa assessment ma. So, in conclusion, the test development process requires um, careful planning, item construction, and review to ensure the validity and the reliability of the assessment. So by following these steps, outline and plan ways that constructing items align the learning outcomes and the conducting of the reviews, the teacher will um, can create an assessment that will accurately uh, that will accurately measure students' understanding and facilitate meaningful learning outcomes. Questions, but, yeah. So, you're not. In this picture, in this figure, this is the steps in the test development process for a classroom test. First is the identified purpose of test. Over the tongue, one purpose identification. Next is the specified learning outcomes to be assessed. Ito, baan? Specification, learning outcomes with specification. Prepare the specification. The next, construct, construction of items. Then, review and revise items.
be instructed will matter. Now, did you understand anything from what you have read? Read. I want, I mean, were you able to identify the purpose of that? The previous reporter keep on emphasizing the importance of it. Now, I want someone to identify, or I want someone to answer what is the purpose of this. I want to volunteer, or should I just call a name? Um, Jenny? Okay, so the purpose of a test is to, to seek or to, to give you what is the knowledge of the student. Yes. As my topic talks about, um, we're talking about identifying the purpose of test. Now, it, as what you have read, the purpose of test, of making a test, is to um, to determine what, whether your student are locking in those, say, I mean, in those, in that certain topic, or um, if you should go on to another topic while, I mean, you should, if you can go on to another topic without, I, with knowing na nakasabot sila sa inyong discussion. So, the first slide states na a reliable and valid information kay. Di ba, you're the one who instruct the test, but they are the one who are answering. So, it is reliable because it's their thoughts, it's their, um, it's their answers. Now, teachers, on the other hand, can use the results to map out their feedback logical notes to improve teaching, learning for appropriate mentoring, which is for the purpose of testing the behavior to be tested as well as how the items can be constructed will matter. So in, well, we can discuss how to create a test about, or how to plan and how to plan a test. So in planning a test, items can, items can be constructed well, how, I, how the items can be constructed will matter. So di nila ka kayo mag, gamakag exam kay theoretical test, mag gamakag exam para sa students kay pangaliwan kung saan mo ka na, like, nako-dako o ganang gano'n sa mga students. You're not just doing that. You're gonna plan a test to um, to detect or diagnose if your students are able to understand your topic or if ever makaproceed ba ka sa live topic kahit ibaw mga kama nakasabot in hang students sa topic na yung hindi-discuss kahit of course you had a test. A test to detect or diagnose if they have been, they learned something or still they are lacking something about the topic that you have discussed. Now, uh, let's have this example. So this is a multiple choice item. With this, we detect and the diagnose emo as to whether asa ang inhang student na sa malisod. Like for example, ay, wait, is that a whole man? Is that a whole man? Sure. Now let's have letter B. If most of your students answered letter B, 
So, of course, mga pungsood ka or nakalimpal with any reliable information, I cannot proceed to another topic that most of your students were able to understand the discussion that you have made. Now, nakasagot mo mo, why do we need to identify the purpose of the test? We are future educators, so I guess kanyang, it's normal for us to understand na kanyang, making a test is not just for if ever we are teachers na, not just for having been created because it's a must in school, but for you to diagnose and understand where are they at first, where, in which part they are lacking, or as a sila na part, maayuti. Yes, determine. 
Okay, so you have an idea. So you understand what is learning out there. Okay, thank you. So, when we make or when we create learning outcome, there is a guide or a framework so that your learning outcome is connected to the topic, to your topic that you will be discussing. So, there are three domains of Bloom's taxonomy, which is um, natakod na siya ni Sir Richard. So, kisa ka, Jerry Agnaka, Pinondo. What are the three domains? <laughs> so, you have an idea? Yes. Yes? Yes, Miss Holda, you have an idea. No? Okay, Miss Figuero, you're raising your hand. Uh, it is the psychomotor, the cognitive, and effectiveness. Yes. Let's start our hand. So, let me go to the Mr. Richard. Yes. <laughs> So, the three domains of learning in both taxonomy are cognitive, psychomotor, and affective. Yes, so when we say cognitive, mental skills or knowledge. So, what's my mind? Example nga, learning target nga, cognitive skill. So, for example, is to analyze. Cognitive ba siya? Yes. Why? From the word itself, analyze. Yes. Thank you. Very good. You will understand what is cognitive and then psychomotor. Yes. Another. Two. Yes. Very good. So, um, effective. Attitude. Unsa ka ha? Ang learning target sa attitude. Attitude. <laughs> yes. So attitude is um it is when we are giving respect to that certain topic. So the example is to respond. Yes, value and. There are, this is the examples of kind of how to create learning target. Basa ba? Oh, I'm sorry. So, first to remember, to define, to describe, to locate. Familiar ba? Yes. Familiar lang? Yes. So, do you understand what is learning outcome? Yes. Tana na ba naka? Understand what is learning outcome? Do you have questions? Do you have questions there? You have? So the importance of learning, the importance of learning outcome it is an essential for an effective learning. And it is a good practice for teaching. So when you um, if you tell your students to to tell them um, to what you expect about them, then you will be able to. Unsaman? You will be able to. So you will be able to see if the students is listening to you. So thank you. <laughs> So next is preparing a, te a test and blueprint. So, so what comes to your mind when you hear the word test blueprint? Do you have any idea? Or a blueprint na lang? Yes, Miss Divai, do you have any idea? <laughs> <laughs> I think the test the three serves serves for the uh, yes serves as the guide is um, prepared. Very good. So that's um the test to fit so so test blueprint define the knowledge and skills you want to assess. So 
Creating a test blueprint will help you plan which questions to include in your exam and ensure that it adequately assesses the learning objectives of the course. So, here are um, a list of key components defining your test. So, can you please read? <coughs>
essay questions. So, muna si Jai ka ng example sa item format. So, dapat is always siya appropriate. For example, this, ang imuang item format is multiple choice question. So, dapat ang imuang ipagdais na mga bata is ka ng multiple choice question. Pwede ni kay multiple choice question na last mga class to do friend. Pero, ang imuang ipagawal sa mga bata is easy questions. So, dapat appropriate siya. So, next. A blueprint is a tool to ensure, number one, the alignment of assessment to standard, standard content, and standard depth of knowledge. So, maupan yung ganay ko nung test blueprint, ang purpose ko nung ito is, arong ma-insure natin na yung assessment ba natin or yung pinapa-exam ba natin sa ato ang mga learners is aligned ba sa target natin learning outcomes during the assessment. Like, Kintahay, ang nasa lesson plan ni mo is verb. And then, ang gihatag ni mo na assessment or sa nakabutang sa test blueprint ni mo is about noun. So, nag-align na ba siya? Standard ba siya? So, when you say standard content, susunod yun ka kung kung sa'yo nakabutang sa course outline mo. Pag sinari mo naman ang standard depth knowledge, dyan pa pa sa pang bloom taxonomy. Which is na... Na-integrate ra ba ang knowledge? Na-integrate ra ba ang psychomotor? And na-integrate ra ba ang affective? So, pinahanglan, every time na before ka mag-conduct ng assessment, we need to ensure na na-integrate ra po yung tulo ka Bloom's taxonomy. So, if maggamata ng full blueprint before ka muhatag ng, ng, ng test or exam sa atong learners, Anha pa lang, hindi ka-review natin ang blueprint natin. Madeterminan na natin ang how oh, did it ay na-align sa akong gihatag na, akong gihatag na outline. Ah, kung ang di ay ni, tawag dito na, mas kinahamalan di ay na mag-focus sa ako sa preview study, kahit wala pa di ay sila kasabot kaayo. So, number two is, tawag dito, if yung blueprint ko na, or yung pagkama ng test blueprint is, tawag dito, to ensure the alignment of assessment to instruction. Kagaya nung sinabi kanina ni Christine, like, if ang makabuktang sa detailed lesson plan mo and sa outline mo is magpapa-essay ka, magpapa-essay ka, hindi yun na. So, what sa outline mo is essay, then magpa-performance task ka. Na-align na ba siya? Diba, dili? And lastly, it will ensure the adequate stretch in assessment. So then, na-determine naman natin ano yung mga lackings in learning sa ato ang mga bata. Na-determine na naman natin kung asa mag-group ng bata nagkamalisog sila in understanding our lesson. So then, nakuha natin yung asa na dapat mo stretch. When you say stretch, on that specific one, since every learner has different adaptive learning capabilities like kung ikaw auditory ka, kung ikaw sa kung ka reading ka. So, then, kung alay na ba ng kwan, hindi na mabibigyan ng usara ka concept ng test. Like, kung ang bago ba is magaling sa essay, then mag-add ka ng essay dire para mas ma-enrich na dyan yung kanya. But at the same time, maybe challenging na elaborate more. So, if tingin mo, yung ang mga bata ni Moore, ang learners ni Moore, wala pa maka- kung ano ka dito, makasabot or they didn't understand well about your lesson. So, then, focus on how to mag-stretch. Like, ah, kanyang yung mga bata, ah, wala nila masagta, dyan mo rin ako ka na, what's wrong with my Kwan lesson? Ah, ako ba ang problema or the lesson itself? So, then, nag-determine nyo, kisay mo adjust, ako ba way of teaching ba na ako or my lesson itself? Like, lisod na ba kaayo ang akong lesson or sa yun na para para nila, sa yun na kaayo? Or, ako ba ino ko ng lisod, magpasagot nila or di ba masagta ng way of teaching ko or yung lesson ko? So then, malalaman mo ba din na termin mo on how to adjust during your assessment? Because assessment is, di ko ha, tell me to that, determining kung asa, kung asa ba ang lackings about the learnings na na-adapt ng bata during your lesson. So next, test blueprint under construction. So then, since we all know that test blueprint is a blueprint na kanakal dito, which is the original or the patent type of our test, which is maupan yung first plan natin before na muhatag ng 
test sa ato bang bata kung baga pilot kuan man ato na pilot uh, examination hmm. since hindi nito determine pa natin ang accurate ba tong test na to para sa mga learners sa karot like masak matubag ra ba kanila ning mga test nakasabot ba ka sila sa lesson nga kung gihatag before so then let us understand how to create a test blueprint so i have an example here but before that let answer first where to begin asa ba ka magsugod sa tama kagama ng test blueprint so first design the blueprint ano ba yung mga needs mo para ma-determine mo yung learning capability ng bata like kinahanglan ba na magkanda ka ng formative assessment or magkanda ka ng pre-test like when you say po ano when you say pre-test sinusukat mo pa lang yung prior knowledge di ba at when you say formative sinusukat mo na yung understanding nila with your current discussion so then makaka-determine ka lang kung ano yung mga ipagsusuksok mo sa test blueprint mo ano yung mga target mo na ma-acquire during your assessment the next create the assessment so since may plano na lang ka create the assessment mawala na yung pilot testing like kani ba ako may gama ng blueprint mo alay mo ba kahit ni sa target learning outcomes ko sa target learning outcomes na curriculum or the topic from the curriculum na sinusunod mo and then the third or and lastly plan for instruction since na determine naman ni mo kung taman asa ang capacity of learning ng bata ni mo then pa plan ka na more for instruction kung si mga ipang add ni mo during your final term or your summative test like ang ani mga bata a uh, sweeto na kayo as sila ani nga topic a uh, ito ano ko ni e i add mo ni sa pan or na ano sila gamay na learnings about ani nga topic i add mo ni ang ani topic nagamali so pa sila siguro i consider na lang mo na lang mo nila gamay na kayo sa i add na mo sa test nila na item from this topic and then let's proceed to the example for further elaboration so as you can see in the table there is objective so in learning uh, in this blueprint meron din na learning objectives like ano ba objective mo kung bakit mo ginagawa yung test blueprint na yon so first is develop aim from needs assessment ano ba yung mga kinahanglan mo or ano yung mga need ng bata to learn from you or from your topic that you are discussing develop goals since na may na ano kay tinatawag na goals or the learning outcomes na pinamutang mo sa imong sinig dito lesson plan plan or dito lesson plan ba yan sige mo muna i-achieve ba yon the develop standard kana ba imo ang ibang tundo is standard ka ba or masyado nang sayon para sa bata o masyado ba na siya ang lesson o standard na siya para sa cognitive demand level ng bata na tinuturuan mo and last develop objectives since before ka mag start ng discussion mo you have objectives na attain ka ba ang objectives mo so if tingin mo na tugbag ra pa mga pamukan na with that pwede mo siyang include sa imong test blueprint and now sa imong test blueprint kinahanglan mo pa rin nga i-make sure na na-apply na gihapon ang kuan ang blue stack taxonomy like may part ba adto na may knowledge na hindi na or lahat ba is kana tao dito na lahat ba is comprehensional wala comprehensional type of test lang or application type of test lang para sa dia syempre mahalaga diyan is kompleto yan panan so makikita niyo diyan sa knowledge may nakabutang na 1 tier so sa blueprint kailangan mo ikuha kung ano yung ano yung one mo way content way mo yun sinasabi ka na ni Kristen Ah, pila ka ko ang pila ka item sa knowledge ba ko butang nimo. If tingin mo ang bata ni mo is nagkamali so din yung kung ko ano dito, in cognitive level type of test, then do may na butang nimo. May nakabutang diyan 1 MC sa comprehension. If tingin mo ang bata ni mo is a uh, average siya in terms of comprehending stories or in terms of comprehending specific ah uh, what specific uh, Uh, specific text then pagbutang pa niya mag-add ka rin di na ba ka bukok if tingin mo nagkaman isang bukas daw si mo if tingin mo sa iyo nang kaayaw i-level mo lang application of 
course, every test has an application. Like, ano ba yung learning na natutunan na doon? Paano ba natin mag-determine na may natutunan na ang learners natin? Of course, kailangan may application. Kasi, doon mo makikita kung paano niya apply ng data ang learnings nila from your discussion. And, from the given one, yung one doon na nakabutang is mauto yung natawagan ng waiting. So, number of items yun na nagtatakal sa pila ka natin sa gibutang ni mo, pila ka comprehensional question, pila ka applicational question. And then, yung TF ane is the type of one, type of question. Like, yung sinasabi ka lang ni Juan ng format, item format rather, item format. Ang gusto may type of question na i-add mo sa blueprint mo or sa test na kinuwali mo. Like, na dito na, puro tomorrow rules lang ba si Jack? Or puro multiple choice? TFES, na dito, uh, stands for true or false and MC stands for, na dito, multiple choice. Or, na dito, or essay ba? Long essay ba? Or short essay lang ang ikukwali mo. Ma so, i-determine ko rin yun sa blueprint ni mo. So, then, Dagi to reconstructional essay. And then the long essay ang LA. And then, he will weigh mo siya ngayon. Dapat siya. So, kung ang nakabutangan na is one, 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 one item for knowledge, one item for comprehensional, and one item for application, ito total siya ngayon sa weighing ni Jan. Then, i-divide mo siya into 100%. Ito yung multiply mo na before mo divide sa 100 din para mukha siya, mukha mo siya sa percentage niya. So, karon yung percentage niya, dapat yan, mutotal siya, regardless kung 25 items lang ba na si Jack, o 20 items, mutotal na dapat si Jack ng 100%. So, masakot ka? Yes. 
it says here, supply type requires students to create. So it means that their answer is based on their knowledge, or their viewpoints, their own ideas to that specific question. So these examples are uh, supply type as four examples. First is the completion, second, third answer, say restricted, and the same as the So why can we say uh, this is this four are an example of supply type? Or can we say that this is an example of supply type? Based on the types of questions. Yes, okay. um, we can see that it is um, an example of supply type because um, all of it are yeah, all of them are you know, in, or, or, um, involves um, the student's knowledge or the student's own answer. Mm -hmm. So that's what she answered really. Um, this for four test examples. We can consider it a supply type because it requires subjective viewpoints or your own ideas to that specific question. So the one that you say, it only requires our knowledge, our viewpoints, for what are the um, the things that we can write down. Okay. Initial objective. So the second one is selection type. So everyone. This type of test answers to the questions are supplied and the person taking the test must choose the correct one. Examples of, 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 of selection type questions are binary choice, multiple choice, matching type, true or false. So as it says here, selection type is a given question. So not actually choices. Uh, the reader, so we can choose to select the new side. Unlike the supply type, now, we have the only request that we can answer. Here, selection type, we have a selection of answer. Not of any one. So, example here, binary choice. So, where I is a familiar name, but it's binary choice. From the word itself, binary. The vowel letters only give it two choices. And multiple choice, matching type, or proof. So the key point here is we have to remember the selection type is there's a selection given for reader to the respondent para mobili. Paper, pencil, 
identification. So as I said, identification, for example, a picture will uh, uh, reveal a picture of something. Then you will call one student to answer or give a viewpoint. So example, function of the data. So all that is stimulated performance and work sample. Involving 
comprehension and application. So, declarative knowledge is able to state the law of supply and demand. And then for comprehension, is able to explain the law of supply and demand. And for the application, is able to explain the rising price of which evolves during summer time. And then procedural knowledge, uh, is able to compute the area of rectangle. Then for comprehension, is able to compare the size of two given lots in terms of area. And then for the application, is able to determine the number of one by one tiles needed to cover a 50 feet by 100 feet hole. So, yeah. in 2001, uh, League 2 games uh, categories of lower or of these lower order thinking skills and simple, simple gener sample generic questions. These generic, generic questions can be useful in uh, informatic complexion or short answer, short answer items to assess simple understanding. So, like for example, knowledge of terminologies. What is in blank? And knowledge of specific facts. When did blank happen? Knowledge of convention, where are blank is what you found. Knowledge of trends and sequences, name the stages of blank. The knowledge of classification and categories, which blank does not belong to the other. Then knowledge of criteria, but what criteria will you use to judge blank? And for the comprehension, what do you mean by the expression blank and so on? So now let's have measuring deep understanding. So when we say measuring the understanding, it goes beyond knowledge and simple understanding levels. How deep understanding? So when we talk about deep understanding, it is about the higher order thinking skills or it requires a more complex thinking process. So according to Macmillan 2007, utilizes a knowledge and understanding continuum to illustrate the relative degree of understanding from knowledge to simple understanding to deep understanding. So now, you would see this table. It shows how this continuum is harnessed, is harnessed in aligning the cognitive levels to learning outcomes with sample behavior. Like remembering, we have recall, recognize, name, describe, comprehend, interpret, exemplify, classify, and so on. Applying, solve, apply, modify, generate, and for analyzing, we have organized, diagnosed, outline. In evaluating, rethink, assess, defend, justify. And lastly, creating, plan, generate, produce, decide, construct, and compose. Knowledge and simple understanding involves the first three cognitive levels, then remembering, comprehending, and applying, referring to the lower order thinking skills, while deep understanding requires the Three higher cognitive levels, the analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So now, so now we have here another table: the alignment of learning outcomes to test types. So this test types can be made flexible it because we are not limited or exclusive to only one cognitive level. If I'm so played up, it's not just as a Lower order thinking skills as well as in higher order thinking skills. So it is flexible and versatile depending on the different learning outcomes you are measuring, like for supply and selection type. So also note that deep understanding is assessed by the same category of item format but using non using non objective types. If there is a uh, supply type, there's a simple understanding, we have compassion and short answer. But in the deep understanding, essay restrictive and essay extended are in the deep understanding or the higher order thinking skills. It's in the essay type of test, but still under supply type because the learners have to provide answers. So it can be essay restrictive. And essay extended. So when we say essay restrictive, we limit the possible answer come from our learner, from the word from the word itself restricted. That means in the test. And essay extended, it is broad in terms of scope. Usually when we ask their opinions or their reaction. But if you are limited something like using two to three sentences, 
In that case, you are in that case that is an essay with restricted but answer could be extended in a way that you will require to state your opinion. So questions could be used as an elicitation device. That is why constructing test items and test elements are both crucial for supply time in order to assess the low level and high level outcomes. In the same way, with the right construction of the steps and options for selected response types, both simple and complex forms of cognition can be activated. So let's study this example. So now we have first the constructed response types of the short answer and extended essay. Everyone, can you please read the lower order? Our reading to the article you just read. What stoppers contribute to any change? So in that example, what do you observe? It is a short answer or an extended essay? Short answer. Short answer. Yes, Julie. I think it's a short answer. Yes, yes, it's a short answer because the only reason is that you because uh, supply times and its space in a specific meeting material without citing the source for the response. It could also be uh, simple recall questions like what factors contribute to climate change. So in higher order, write an article on how the government and the community can work together to mitigate the factors causing environmental damage. So this is likewise a supply type since it requires a higher higher and order thinking skills. So in this example, what level of deep understanding it is? Is it uh, analyzing, evaluating, or creating? All of them. Yes, Teresa? Uh, can you please the question? Can you please repeat the question? So what? In the higher order, what level of depth understanding it is? It is a analyzing, evaluating, or creating? Uh, I think it can be both create. Yes, creating. creating. Thank you. So creating right because uh, the what is that write an article. So creating is you have to create then another example for selected response type. So from the word selected, so there is an option given or choices are given. So lower order, according to the article we just read, what factors contribute to climate change? A volcanic eruption, B population explosion, C forest inundation, D carbon emission. So the correct option is based on the specific uh, analysis of the alternative effect. And in higher order, which the following factors which affect climate change? can be controlled by mass. So this election requires the analysis of the alternative event. First, it calls for identifying what factors affecting climate change and then analyze, analyzing whether a man can control, control it or not. So there is different types of uh, questions and sample item steps. So when we say item steps, we are talking about the possible as item, assessment item that we could use targeting the particular type of the questions. So Mellor, Len, and Ramon categorize of thought questions from deep understanding. These simple items can be used in constructing test types both for supply and selection types that can elicit complex speaking skills. So, like for this, like this, comparing, for example, items can describe the similarities and differences between comparing the two following methods for correlating cost and effect, what are major causes of, what would be the most likely effects of, and justifying which of the following alternatives, why you favor and why, would explain why you agree or disagree with the following statement, and generalizing, Formulate similar 
general generalization of the following data. Another example of the state set of principles that can explain the following events. And very in light of the facts presented, what is most likely to happen then? How would similar acts be likely to react to the following? So, in very is making predictions now. Then explaining why did the handle go up short after it was covered by the jar. Another is explain what the president will when he said the box comes to me. In persuading, write a letter to the platform to get approval for a class bill trip to the state capital. And for classifying, group the following items according to and what the following items have in common. And in training, Less as many ways as you can think of more. Now that we have made up a story describing what would happen to this. Applying the principle, using the principle of blah 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 as a guide, describe how we can solve the following problem situation and describe a situation that illustrates the principles of. So our lesson here not only based from our own understanding, when you write an assessment, the people is a reflection that we always need, need to relate the, step, the test types with the level of learning outcomes. So, um, we will be understanding and perform as that. So, in the case of letter writing, we just got that and story writing. Likewise, assess high-level learning outcome involving complex thought processes like um, um, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So, um, in 1993, Angelo and Ross extensively designed classroom, classroom assessment tasks for college level to college level that are performance-based type in nature. So. Um, like for example, thinking skills, we have analyze, evaluate, and create. So, can you please read and let's analyze. Analyze. Okay, so analytic methods, um, writing a one or two page of analysis of a specific problem or uh, issue then in the pros and cons grid, uh, making a list of pros and cons, pros and cons of a decision mode. Then in content form and function outline, analyzing the what, how, and why a particular message uh, in an advertisement or commercial. Then in evaluate, we have body point, misconception check. And empty outline. So my this point, uh, identify identifying what students find the uh, find least clear in a lesson story or kind of demonstration. Diba na kapag tani my this point kung ginig sa sa child nga after sa lesson or mga story, pumunta nang tutaon sa atong nasabdan. So next we have the conception check. Assessing students' prior belief that hinder their learning. Then we have empty outline. Recalling and organizing an important points, important points, uh, points of picture or reading. Then next we have create application guides directed for facing paper or project postmodels. Then application guides, designing an application of other scientific principles or procedure in real world. Then directed for using translating what has been learned in one's own words or form of specific audience. Then paper or project perspectives, writing a very structured job of a paper or project. So one of example I mean project Paper or project pro prospectus is katubihin mo natin pang grade 12. Ano sa man to? Katubihin mo natin pang grade 12. Mali. This is a very good. This is? This one. This one. Baby day. Baby wish. We should study. 
Depending the target outcome.
using the same example as we had to look at, uh, short answer is the same as official type, but it differs in terms of blocks. Aside from remembering, it could also test comprehension and application part of the learner. To illustrate in this, we have an example of a stimulus and interrogative statement, direct question. So it is an interrogative statement, so we need to answer it. And the other column is response, short phrases, or statement. A. What is four seven polygon called? The answer is quadrilateral. Then B. During what period was Mulibet and Giri written by Dr. Hosenza? The answer is Spanish. C. How much does a book trader gain for a book? He sells for 150 pesos if he gets 30% more than what he pays for it. The answer is 40, 45. For you to know what to do and not to do when constructing this type of test, I have here some guidelines in the construction of short and short items. Number one is take the items so that only one answer is correct, and also for easy checking. The second one is take the item so that the required answer is free. So when I explain the long answer out, dapat ang yung question kung hindi kami explain ang short answer, dapat ang yung question hindi mag-demand o paragraph or explanation. The third one is do not use questions verbatim from textbooks and other instructional materials. So kung magamang ang question, dapat hindi mong i-revise or i-paraphrase kaya yung bata ng estudyante o mag magtuon sila nila kay word to word ang dami ng memorize without knowing na mas nakasabot kung sila nila memorize. Fourth is designate units required for the answer. Kung magamang ang question, dapat mag dapat na itong specific sa ito, madaling na lang ang sira sa ito sa ito. Fifth is state the items so simply with words students understand. Our goal is to assess and make sure that the language we are using is within the level of awareness. Common points of completion type and short answer. Can you please read the presentation? Appropriate for assessing the learning of knowledge and simple understanding. Take the goal of assessing both declarative and procedural knowledge. So, ang completion type of short items, parang yung sila na dalirahin mo sa track. Dalirahin mo. Okay, Ford, can you please read? Both are objectively scored since a fleet of connection can be prepared in advance. So, dalira po ka maka-correction na nila. Can you please read that fifth one? Both need a whole number of items to assess the learning outcome. Enough number of items to estimate the learnings of the students. Do you have any questions regarding the last night's discussion? Okay, that's all. That's all of my discussion. Okay, so good morning, learners. Okay, good afternoon. Kumusta ang tatang kay Okay, so pwede pa kung hiyan pa na, no, sa hindi sa pagkariyong mag-uan sa tambar. Okay, so when I say jump, clap, ang clap na, when I say jump, clap. Okay, so when I say clap, jump, hindi, okay? And then kung wengan ko, you face right, face mo left. Get sa back, then when you face right, face mo left. Okay, so you face right. Okay, clap. Okay, pasukan 
Ganun ka lang, matawag mo na yung example because you are as you are just asking the tourist spot and you are just asking the learners to justify. Gets ra ba? So, ang, ang comment sa question is about ra sa place, so residence, kung asa lang po yung learners. Gets ra ba? Yes. Okay, so sa restricted is, kung ang dyan, uh, not the limitation ng answers. But then, it's easy to prepare, prepare for us. No, okay. Yung po raman. So, ang ilang answer ko ni is, um, mostly one to two sentences ra. Okay. <laughs> So, good morning again, everyone. Good. So, I want you to listen carefully because a little later I will be asking some questions. So, now, let's know how or what, how to construct an essay type of test. So, designing test is very important part of assessing students' um, level of understanding or level of knowledge. So, because of uh, uh, level of understanding in applying what they are learning. So whether you use low stakes or frequent evaluations, like when you say low stakes, that a minor round of tests like um, quizzes, and then you can use also high stakes or infrequent evaluations. For example, these are the uh, midterm exams, um, periodical tests. And final, so kana mga major exams. <coughs> so now let's know or let's uh, yeah let's know the suggestions for constructing an essay questions by Miller, Lean, and Randall. So please read the first um, suggestion. Construct questions that are all for the skills specified in the written standards. So. You have to be specific of the questions that you are uh, making or constructing. For example, your your learning objectives is about numeracy or what you say literacy, but you are making a questions about numeracy. So, wala na simple or wala na match. So, your questions in making or your essay questions should uh, meet your intended intended needs of results for your measurements, assessments, and evaluations of the learning and understanding uh, or comprehension of the learners. So, please read the second one. Prepare an outline of the expected answer in class. Okay, so after you have construct the question, so you have to um, outline your um, answers because, you know, you have to <coughs> You have to uh, uh, prepare an outline or this or that. No, some some teachers, you know, are um. It is because sometimes as teachers, kanang kita na mga questions pinawa ta kami do sa unsay ni answer so dili ko ta kaho na ha mao na ni answer so as a teacher we should be prepared for the um answers kay para mahibaw ana na ta na kada bitaw da na na tay outline na na tay keywords kung unsa na kimo answers sa mga sa mga bata so next one and the and the problem and for it questions so Indicate an approximate time limit for each question. So, for example, you are discussing, and after the, the discussions is like you um the create ka or kanang state questions, and then what can I indicate of time na? Okay, you can answer that question in five minutes. So, kay wak mong kanang ingon nga ah five minutes na di ay so ang mga bata ah. Okay, you can answer that question in five minutes, minutes and after five minutes, please pass your answer. So, in Anna, Kai, Kai, hello, Kai, if you indicate time, so the students will know the amount of time they should spend on each question and the level of um, detail is expected in their 
responses. So number four. <coughs> Avoid the use of optional questions or letting users choose a question they would like to answer among the list. Okay, so we need to avoid giving optional questions to our students. Again, we need to be specific of the questions we are giving to our students. For example, Anne, mo hatag ka tulong ka questions in number one, and then mo inyo na kama. Okay, in the in the in the in these three questions, you can answer the only one or pwede ka mamili ko asa na questions imo and sira. So we should not do that. We should be specific. So number one is the right question imo kana ara. Kaya para dalit na to ma assess kung kung ansa ato ang gusto i measure up i evaluate sa ato mga students. Kaya nawa every students is lahi lahi ang di ang sira ng question. So maglayo ko tungkat. learning or understanding. So again, we have to be specific sa questions na atong ihatag sa atong mga students. Okay. So now, these are the extended uh, suggestions in constructing an essay or non-objective supply type of test. So please read the number one. No, 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 no. Okay. We should know when is the prop or appropriate time to apply the non-objective or the essay test. Because since essay questions is very easy to to make. Dali alas si Jaa, imuon. So, basta nagpataka lang tao ka ng magpataka lang tao ka ng hatag sa estudyante. There are some topics or there are some times na sometimes na Um, assessment is not only about essay, essay uh, questions. They can, um, they can assess through who are man, through uh, performance tasks, through oral, oral recitation, diba? So we should know when to apply or what topics we could uh, we should apply the essay questions. Am I clear about that? Yes. yes. Okay. Number two. Prepare an outline of the expected answer in advance. Okay. As what I discussed earlier, prepare an outline. So, um, why it is because some malakita ang giyong yah? Some teachers ask the students to write or answer that question, but then sila mismo makakibaw kung sa ang answer na ilang ipasita. So, number three, use the scoring rubric. So. This is an example of story rubric. So, I bawa na sa tanan mo. So, why we should use a story rubric? It is because in using a rubric, it is used to describe the criteria by which students' assignments are graded. So, ani na to, ani um, natan as mga students ko na asa di ay asa di ay ilang tanan mo. How to construct their answers? Uh, with that idea, explanation. So we should we should um, completely and clearly uh, discuss or write their answers in a kind of constructed uh, constructed writing. And <clears throat> so rubrics can be helpful helpful for making. Grading faster and more consistent. So, dali ah, nato mag-grade ang mga students na, oh, kanay di ay, sakto na ijaw ka ng pagka-construct. Kanay kay, dali mo sabdan kay, ito yung bisunod mo. Kung nasa ang naa sa rubric na ako sa ikatag. So, through the rubric, so, mag-guided na ang mga baka, ang mga learners, to in constructing their answers. So, ikatag pala na niyo sa questions, dapat maghatag sa ga o rubrics. And then, number three. Oh, number four. Decide on how to handle factors that are relevant to the learning outcomes being measured. Okay. So, for example, for this, is ka na itaw handwriting or penmanship. Baka, baka naghatag sa ka ng rubrics of about the Good immersion because all of us know that not all students, not all the people in this world have a 
good handwriting, right? So that you can learn to get it on the other hand. We should, so we should not become handle or know how to address this issue. So, kung kung ang imo learning of oh, kung ang imo objective is about the handwriting, then you can add that to the rubrics you are giving to your students. But if not, like for example, about the literacy or numeracy, then Sorry. Then you should know, like for example, in this na uh, handwriting, you can para para dili para everyone is equal. Then you can you can um say to them that we didn't need a pass through, through printed or yeah, you know, type in Microsoft and whatever, whatever. So in ana ang koal. Okay, number five. Evaluate all responses to one question before going on the next one. Okay. Understand the point, right? Evaluate all responses to one question before going on to the next one. Because, for example, can I check ka? Ja, agino mo kasi is about fifty students. So, if imo mo gum ang uh, imo pair compare ang answers of the students every number, ano ni mo makita kung asa kinsa ang stand out or kinsa ang answer ang ning kanang nice juto answer or nasigo sa questions. And ano ang ato matanaw if naaway mga estudyante nga nagsinundugay or pareha of answers. Like every word na lang na juto is pareha. So, so it is very important to evaluate first the first questions of all the answers of the students before before going into the next one. Am I clear about that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, number six. When possible, evaluate answers without looking at the student's name. Okay, to avoid biases or um, favoritism, like. If you think or you are checking the leading student, it's already an advantage to that student. So we all know that way. It's a divided list of ice so for first year nato. It's not like the kailang maestrano ni Dios is na if she is checking the kanan essay sa mga bata iba ija don't feel on ang names to avoid favorites in general. Kasi po iyon ni Dios kailas siya ang bata so mahirap ang advantage ng upright na ni a okay na ni tagaan ni oh dapat ng score so to avoid that um we should kana mahirap mo atong kinsa or di na to kapag awon ang names sa students kaya basa ng oy friend tama din ako kung ano ba din ako oh di ba so so ang upright na ni siya so tagaan ni perfect score so if mahirap mo we should kana Avoid looking into the student's name when checking. Okay. Kay, makawa ano ko na maka-influence na sa atong kanang mind na. Ang kanang siya kay, right? Kung hindi, hindi rin man yung mo English, hindi rin man yung siya mo kanang how to communicate. So, sure, okay. We should avoid that. So, am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now, if you are re really, really <laughs> listening to our discussion, so I will ask you some <laughs> questions. So, what do you mean by non-objective supply type of test? So, anyone? Volunteer. Okay, so, so what do you mean by non-objective supply type of test? You can you can answer in your own words like one word now, one phrase. It's very okay. 